Okay, firstly, what we're going to start with is a, a cleft graft. Now, cleft grafts are extremely versatile. You can use them on so many different types of plants that we deal with. The reason they're also easy or they're, they're intuitive and they're quick and for many, many of the different fruit trees that we use and the flowering trees we use here at Fairchild Garden, we use the cleft graft. This is a, an extremely useful way. So what we do, again, we start with our rootstock which is right here. Again, the rootstock is a seedling that we've planted and we've grown up. It needs to be healthy. It needs to be well watered. It needs to be fertilized. It needs to be, in other words, taken care of in a good way to allow this to survive. Then we will take our scion. Now our scion is the piece of our mature tree that we, we want to start with, that, that we want to propagate. Now this scion I cut off already from the tree. I cut off its leaves right here. The leaves have been removed. And then I wrapped this with my parafilm. My parafilm being my very stretchy wax. It, it's, like a, it's like a plastic wax that you can wrap over your scion. So I now have my scion. I have my rootstock. And I, we're now going to do our cleft graft. So I'm going to put this down right here. I take my clippers. And again, you do this with clippers instead of a knife, usually, because it'll make for a cleaner cut when you do it. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to decapitate my uh, rootstock completely. So I've cut off the entire top of the rootstock, and you discard that. I'm going to spin this around here so you can see a little bit. Then I take my knife, and my knife, I'm going to split right down the middle of the rootstock. I say, so I want this to split right down the middle. Now remember, you, when, you, when I say split it, it's not like splitting wood. You want to cut it down the middle because in any grafting technique, you have to have a clean, precise surgical cut. That is the entire idea. So I take my rootstock like this and I'm ready now and I start down like that. Now I'm using my hands to steady the whole thing. Another thing to note here while I do this is you notice that the only motion I made, I had my, my hands on the blade and I made the as a single motion going down and I didn't do, uh, remember it's not whittling, you are making a precise cut. So I have total control of my knife. I'm not gonna slip and cut myself. That's why I use two hands, and that's why if your knife is sharp, you will not cut yourself, or at least not very often. Okay, so now I have my rootstock prepared. You can see here how it's split open like this, right down the middle, perfect. Now I'm gonna take this down. I have my scion, here's my scion. This is another important point to remember when you cleft graft. You have to graft with uh, green side up, or in other words, make sure that your buds are put in here properly. You have to insert your scion upside up, okay? You can't put it in upside down. Actually, if you do graft it upside down, sometimes they will live, but um, it, it imparts strange characteristics onto your plant. So now I take this scion, and on the scion, I'm cutting right through the parafilm, and what I'm basically doing is making a wedge out of my scion, okay? So there, I've just made my wedge. There it is. Nice clean cut. Then I take my wedge, and I place it wonderfully right there. So this is what's so nice about a cleft graft. It's very clean, it's simple, um, it can be done on small material. The be best thing you also want to do is you want to match up the width of your uh, rootstock with the width of your scion. Now, the only thing you have to do now is to wrap this up. Now, we, you can use grafting tape, but on a real small, this is a very small rootstock. You can do this on bigger rootstocks than this. So, but on a small rootstock, what I tend to do is I like to use parafilm. So I just stretch it a little bit, hold it with my finger below. Then I come over. 
Now I have it nice and it's going. Now the parafilm sticks to itself. Whoops. Now the parafilm broke. No biggie deal. You just take it. Start again. All right. Now since I already had my scion wrapped with parafilm, I don't have to wrap any further up the rootstock. All right, or up the scion. Now once you have it done like that, you are essentially done with this, with this method. So with the cleft graft now, I've grafted it. You also want to try to leave as many leaves on the rootstock as you can. The reason that is, is the rootstock is producing energy. This helps keep the whole system churning, keeps it running, particularly with something like a jackfruit. Jackfruits thrive on vigor. Most of the plants that we graft in the fall and the spring, like jackfruit, mamesapodes, sapodillas, caimitos, things like that, they need to have enough energy in order to, to be successful. So this is why I like to leave leaves. If I could have four or five leaves on here, it would be much better. Now, I have that on there. What did I forget to do? I actually didn't forget. I just need my little dra dramatic uh, pause there. But what you now have to do is label it. If you remember what I said, if you don't label it, you won't remember what it was. So now I know that this is a 5-1 jackfruit and I'm going to put my label right there. And then this plant, you would move into good bright light. You keep it watered. You keep it protected from winds, keep it protected from... I try to not put it in direct sun because the direct sun is a little harsh on the, um, on the parafilm and will tend to, um, to make the parafilm uh, go brittle and fall off before it's ready to come off. Now, I would want to show you also right here, this is a completed, um, the same idea, the same graft, cleft graft of a Meme Sapoti. The only difference with this Meme Sapoti is this Meme Sapoti was actually done with these leaves right here on my scion, okay? These leaves right here are the original leaves. And then this was covered in a bag and put in in a little bit uh, darker conditions. You have to put this in under bright light, but make sure it gets no full sun if you're going to use the leaves on your scion. And you have to cover the whole plant and create basically a mist house around your plant so you have to take the bag and cover it and tie it off. And then once your plant starts to produce new leaves like this, this is all new growth. Once you see new growth on either one of your grafting methods, whether your jackfruit or your M.A. Sapote, then you know it's time that you can take the plant, start to treat it normally, move it to the full sun. If you, if, you, if you have a bag on it, you must take the bag off. You cannot have a bag and do it. Now this plant, the jackfruit, did not need a bag because the scion was covered with the parafilm. All right, so it doesn't lose water. Remember, the trick is these, your scion cannot dry out before it heals and grows. If it dries out, it dies. So the whole trick is to try to get these things to attach, start to grow before they dry out and die. So the one without leaves obviously dries out less. The one that has leaves, that's why we had to put a bag over this one or otherwise it would dry out. Now, um, again, cleft grafts can be used with uh, any tree, whether, whether you're grafting it in the summer, the winter, or the spring and fall. Cleft grafts work very, very well. They're very efficient. The only thing you have to worry about is to try to match up your rootstock and your scion.